Hello everyone. In the lecture series of application of thermodynamics, this is the last lecture, lecture number 11, where the topic of discussion is determination of equilibrium constant using Nernst distribution law. So the Nernst distribution law can be utilized in determining the equilibrium constant Kc of reactions such as potassium iodide plus iodine equals to potassium triiodide. Here is the equation. Ki plus I2 they combine with each other to form Ki3. So in this regard what we have to do? From the beginning let me start. We have to take two different solvents which would be immiscible with each other and these two solvents is among these two solvents one is organic solvent another is aqueous solvent. Organic solvent may be carbon tetrachloride or chloroform and inorganic solvent is aqueous that means it is purely water and iodine is such a solute which can be distributed among both that is which is soluble in both and distribution this and is distributed among these two phases and an equilibrium between these two can take place so concentration of iodine in organic solvent and concentration of iodine in water this the ratio of these two concentrations is fixed at a particular temperature according to the Nernst distribution law and this uh, ratio is denoted as KD. So what we have to do? Let me start from the beginning. What we have to take is a saturated solution of iodine in chloroform. Let me take as for example chloroform. Okay. I will take the name chloroform here in instead of organic in the place of organic solvent. Now iodine is taken uh, as a saturated solution within chloroform and here potassium iodide is dissolved in water. These two are shaken well. So some iodine would be extracted by water here and this iodine uh, would be reacting with this potassium iodide to form potassium triiodide. So two types of equilibrium would occur here. One is the distribution of free iodine in the two phases, in the organic phase, this iodine and this iodine. On the, another equilibrium takes place among these three species, the chemical equilibrium. Potassium iodide plus iodine equals to Ki3, this equilibrium. Okay, the equilibrium for this chemical reaction. So, how we will proceed? Uh, First of all, when these two different solutions are titrated by using standard uh, sodium thiosulfate solution, which is a uh, secondary standard and standardized by potassium dichromate. So right now we have standard, that means standardized sodium thiosulfate solution, which can titrate iodine. Uh, actually, it uh, it reduces iodine into iodide and gets itself oxidized. And equivalent amount of iodine is titrated and the concentration of iodine can be determined from this titration reaction by using starch as the indicator. Okay. So, separately, we can take the organic solution and the aqueous solution as well and we can perform separate titration reactions. So when we shall titrate this solution then the concentration of iodine in the organic solvent can be determined. But at the time when we shall titrate the aqueous solution at that moment this iodine cannot be determined we would obtain, we would obtain here is actually the total amount of iodine which is present in water here. Total amount of iodine means this free iodine plus this potassium triiodide. Why? Because when iodine is titrated then this amount would be 
gradually reducing that means this amount would be decreasing okay when this amount would be decreasing according to the last settler principle the reaction would shift to the left hand side so this ki3 would start decompose into ki plus i2 and as a result this ki3 would completely decompose until the whole iodine is titrated so when the aqueous solution is titrated then the overall amount of iodine is obtained so this free iodine cannot be obtained okay then how this free iodine can be obtained let's uh, do the following steps first of all the concentration of iodine in organic layer is obtained by titration uh, by using potassium sodium thiosulfate okay and one thing you must remember that when you would be titrating the organic solvent some solid ki must be added in order to extract the dissolved iodine uh, into the aqueous part where sodium thiosulfate is dissolved okay so that is a trick of titrating so that's a different thing that is that has nothing to do with this calculation now c0 is what c0 is the amount of potassium iodide okay c0 is the amount of potassium iodide which can be obtained by simply weighing the solid potassium iodide at the time of preparation of its aqueous solution so it's very easy to obtain but simply by weighing it can be taken okay but what does it indicate it is actually the amount of uh, potassium iodide plus free a uh, free potassium iodide plus potassium triiodide why because all the potassium iodide which was taken at the time of weighing the solid one it is not remaining free within this solution because some of them has combined with this i2 to form ki3 so this is actually the ki plus ki3 okay so c0 is the value which is obtained from the uh, balance weight is actually the overall concentration of potassium free potassium iodide and the potassium triiodide okay now i2 i2 means free iodine that means concentration of free iodine in aqueous layer which cannot be obtained directly and c aqueous is the concentration of total iodine in aqueous layer okay that means it is the total that is the summation of this one plus this one that means this free iodine plus ki3 so we are getting two uh, such a parameters which are summation of different two different things one is c0 c0 is ki plus ki3 whereas c aqu c aqueous c aqueous is concentration of i2 plus ki3 now the equation the the calculation seems a little clear to you how we have to take the help of partition coefficient kd kd is actually what na concentration of iodine which is distributed in the organic medium as well as in the aqueous medium okay this amount is c org c organic and this amount is i2 concentration that means concentration of free iodine and their ratio is kd so kd equals to c organic over free iodine concentration in the aqueous medium this picture is just rewritten here just for my convenience let me proceed further here so this equation the equation kd equal to c organic by i2 has been rearranged in such a way that i2 concentration equals to c organic by kd so the amount of free iodine is now obtained how na by just simply dividing the concentration of iodine in the organic solvent by partition partition coefficient okay 
so ki3 concentration is what ki3 concentration is actually we have got uh, by titrating the aqueous layer i2 plus ki3 so i2 plus ki3 is obtained by titrating the aqueous layer so if this overall amount c aqueous uh, from this amount if this i2 is subtracted then ki3 concentration can be obtained so simply the overall amount of uh, iodine is c aqueous and the free iodine is c organic by kd so the difference of these two is the concentration of ki3 okay so in order to get the equilibrium constant we need three concentrations ki3 i2 and ki so what is the concentration of ki now concentration of ki is very simple c0 was what c0 was the overall concentration of potassium iodide before the reaction but after the equilibrium has been established some of the potassium iodide has been uh, uh, utilized in com combining with iodine and which is reflected in the form of ki3 so what is the concentration of ki3 and the concentration of ki3 is this parameter c aqueous minus c organic by kd so this amount can be subtracted simply from the total amount of potassium iodide so c0 minus this parameter that is c aq aqueous minus c organic by kd so we have obtained the three concentrations separately okay therefore the equilibrium constant kc this is the expression of equilibrium constant and these values just are uh, substituted with respect to this right hand side values instead of ki3 concentration we are putting these parameters instead of i2 concentration we are putting this parameter and instead of ki concentration we are putting this parameter okay so simply this way by using nernst distribution law the equilibrium constant can be calculated so that's all for this chapter then now let's discuss the questions if you have any question so you can uh, inbox me in the uh, uh, in the comment box okay give your email id i'll give you the answers to so question number 1 differentiate between the rate of change in internal energy with respect to the change in number of moles of any one of the uh, components by keeping pressure temperature and number of moles of other components constant with the rate of change in internal energy by keeping constant uh, with respect to any uh, uh, mole number of mole of any one of the components by keeping volume entropy and number of moles of other components constant that means here constants are ptnj and here the constants are bsnj and u is changing with respect to ni in both cases so what are the differences in between them this is question number one question number two chemical potential is conventionally known as the molar free energy of substance is there any kind of expression for chemical potential other than in terms of free energy so it means uh, in terms of free energy that means g you can say easily that is g bar that is del g by del n i at constant pressure temperature and nj this chemical potential but do you have any idea that there is some more expressions of chemical potential if it is so then what are these so this is the question deduce the gibbs Durham relations so in the uh, uh, previous lectures in the uh, lecture number one or two you can find it and the links are given in the description box below how does chemical potential change with pressure at constant temperature okay so uh, by graphical presentation these are all discussed and some animations were also shown in the previous lectures you can uh, get all the links below the link of the previous lecture link of the next lecture by clicking sequentially you can uh, get all the lectures in this series okay 
Next question, define fugacity and you have to prove that uh, this one, okay, the relationship of fugacity and the symbols of their usual significances. And question number five is starting from the expression, you have to start from this expression and derive this relationship, okay, by using the Van der Waals equation. So this derivation is also uh, shown in the previous lectures. Now move on to the next questions. Explain with the help of chemical potential, why does solid melt and a liquid boil on heating? So the same, uh, in the same place where the uh, chemical potential, the pressure temperature dependence of chemical potential uh, was shown in those slides, you can get in those lectures, you can get this answer. Okay, once again, I repeat, if you have uh, any problem in answering these questions then you can write your email id in the uh, comment box and i will send you the answers okay a solid substance at substantially low pressure does not melt yes the phenomena of sublimation actually okay so we have to explain this phenomenon of sublimation with the uh, uh, from the light of chemical potential okay Next question, calculate at what ratio a binary ideal gas mixture has its maximum or minimum entropy. That means uh, entropy of mixing ideal gases from that derivation. And calculate at what ratio, the same question for entropy of mixing. Uh, it, this one was the entropy of mixing ideal gases and this one was uh, free energy of mixing ideal gases. Okay, so these are all shown. Define ideal solution. What are the thermodynamic conditions of a solution to behave ideally? Calculate the expression for internal pressure of a Van der Waals gas by using the thermodynamic equation of state. Which electrodes of carbon, tin, and sulfur have delta H equal to zero? This is D, D actually this is delta triangle. Okay, delta H equal to zero. And does partition coefficient or the distribution coefficient depend upon temperature? And finally, show that it is economical to use extract uh, uh, substance by portions using solvent extraction principle. So the just last lecture before this one, the solvent extraction principle. So these all these are all over the questions. Thank you. Have a nice day.